Hey, good Wednesday morning, everybody. Bam Weather Meteorologist Brett Waltz here, giving you a long range forecast update, guys. Details today about upcoming tropical threats for the U.S. East Coast. We've got two systems we're keeping an eye on out in the Atlantic that are likely to develop over the next couple of days. And then we're going to talk about what the latest drought indications are as we head into October. We've had a lot of beneficial rain in terms of relieving some of those drought conditions over the past several days. But forecast trending warmer, trending drier as we head into next month. And then we will end uh, with a little bit of some winter updates. Uh, latest details on some of the research that we've been looking at this week. Something we will try to do every Wednesday is give it a, at least a little bit of a tidbit of what we're looking at for the upcoming winter. Let's hop right into it. Let's take a look here at the observed rainfall over the past seven days. You can, again, you can see where that beneficial rainfall especially has fallen across parts of Kansas, Missouri, Arkansas, uh, into parts of southern Iowa and into the lower Ohio Valley. Now you can also see spots that have been skipped out on the more widespread and the more heavier rains kind of through this region in here. This has been the area that certainly some spots have been able to cash in on moisture, but it hasn't been as widespread and there have been more areas in here that have gotten skipped out and have had generally lighter rain. That's important because again, forecast ahead uh, after the short term looks to trend drier and it will continue to run warmer than normal. I think really critical rains further down to the south across parts of Arkansas, Missouri and along the Mississippi River in this region and here this is where some of the worst of the drought conditions had been expanding and so some of these heavier rains more than three to four inches plus of rain in some spots locally more than six inches of rain in northwestern Arkansas uh, really key to at least alleviate a little bit of those drought conditions over the past seven days, I've replenished the river levels at least a little bit. They've been running very low already along the Mississippi River. Again, we've talked about down in Memphis. There's a couple of other spots as well that have gotten pretty low. This should stop the bleeding at least for a time, uh, but with the drier and the hotter forecast ahead, likely will begin to lower again the further into October that we go. Taking a look here at the rainfall forecast over the next seven days, we can see here comes the drier air coming right back into the forecast. The main rain chances over the next seven days will come further down to the south and to the east into parts of the Carolinas, the mid-Atlantic. Some of that will be with the upper level low, potentially maybe wrapping in a little bit of moisture with these tropical systems. Right now, highest indications would be that the heaviest rains with that stay off the coast. Uh, but still more uncertainty as we get into the middle part of next week on where exactly these storms end up going. Uh, we're going to talk about that here in a moment, but just to go back to the northwest here for a second, you can see really not a lot of notable rain chances across the plains the next seven days. Still some lingering rain in the short term in parts of Kansas and Missouri, but uh, that drier air will be filtering in. It will be milder than normal as well, so favorable harvest conditions uh, for the majority of the ag belt primary growing regions as we work over the next seven plus days. In terms of the tropical threats ahead, uh, again, there's two that we're keeping an eye on. This one that's further west would be the one that's more likely to make impact uh, or at least get close to the U.S. coast. What you're looking at here is the multi-model ensemble. It's the European data, the United Kingdom data, the American data, and the Canadian data pretty much all blended into one. And then the colors that you see basically highlight where the highest density or the highest likelihood of the track would be based off of the tracks of all of these different members. We're talking probably 200 plus different weather models in here. And so the brighter the colors that you see, the more likely it will be for the storm to track over a specific location. What you can see is pretty high confidence that the storm is going to track towards Puerto Rico, the Dominican Republic here, uh, up towards the Bahamas. Where it goes after that, you can see the colors become lighter, the forecast becomes a lot less certain. There's a lot of spread in the model guidance. Some of the data has been trying to take it towards the Carolinas and the Mid-Atlantic. A lot of the data also trying to send this storm out to sea. And so really, right now, confidence is pretty high that this storm should miss east of Florida. But where it goes after that is where the confidence is a little bit lower. I would say that right now, the trend over the past couple of runs has been a little bit further to the east on the EPS. The 6Z data came in a little bit further east. Here was the 0Z data, and you can see there were more members in here that were trying to move this storm towards the Carolinas. I have a couple of concerns with that. Number one, 
the European data has done very poorly over the past week or so in terms of tropical activity. It completely missed the West Pacific tropical activity. It's been highly volatile with the activity out here in the Atlantic as well. And you can kind of see all these different lines, these narrow lines that you see are all the different members. They are just all over the place right now. So again, you can see where the brighter colors are. Confidence higher uh, north of north and west of Puerto Rico and towards the Bahamas that the storm will track through this region in here, but then there's a ton of spread after that. Again, the 60 data ticked a little bit further to the east. That's more in line with the American data, and that would be a more favorable track to keeping the storm away from the U.S. east coast. Here's another thing that I want to highlight. This is the Google Deep Mind Ensemble. It has also been highly volatile. Uh, this really has not been super useful to this point, so I would really highly caution you uh, using these AI models to do the hurricane forecasting right now because, uh, to be completely honest, they're, they're learning still, and I think it's just too early in their stage of development to be a trusted source in terms of model data with the hurricane activity. And to prove that point, if we actually look at the more traditional models, and especially the traditional hurricane models, look how much better agreement that we are seeing in terms of the track. It's not nearly as big of a spread. I would say based off this, your most likely track is going to kind of be through here and then potentially out to sea just east of the east coast. If I had to make a call right now, I think this storm likely stays east of the Carolinas. Certainly, you're not 100% out of the woods. I think that if you were along the South Carolina, North Carolina, and Virginia coast, you need to be aware. But I think that the highest risk is just to your east as things stand right now. Here's our official kind of first call outlook confidence still a little bit lower than normal at this distance normally data and a little bit of a better agreement by this point but a high risk that the storm will track through the bahamas and then the confidence lowers a little bit as it works towards the carolina coast right now i'd say a low end threat there slightly higher threat to the east but still uncertainty that we need to be keeping an eye on uh, again carolinas virginia be aware of this uh, monitor the forecast. We'll be keeping an eye on things and make adjustments as needed over the next couple of days. Beyond that, guys, I do want to talk about just the overall pattern evolution because we've got some cooler air behind this upper level low uh, that will be moving in over the next couple of days, but not notable. No, no real tap to any kind of a notable cold air source over the next several days. And in fact, you can see widespread warmer than normal temperatures bleeding back into the forecast for much of the country as we go into early next week. Parts of the northern plains, how about 10 to 15 degrees warmer than normal to start out the month of October? We do have a little front in here that will likely dip down into the eastern portion of the country and into the northeast maybe the far interior northeast need to watch for some kind of a frost threat in there uh, but for the ag belt indiana illinois and points to the west continuing to run warmer than normal and, and that pattern pretty much going to stick around as we go all the way through the first week of october warmer than normal temperatures expected do want to keep an eye on a front around the sixth seventh or so of the month again i think that if it dives in anywhere it's likely going to be let me go back here sorry about that guys let me turn my drawing tool off here for a moment we'll go back it's likely going to be here in the eastern third of the country something to keep an eye on but the overall overwhelming signal continues to be mild ahead here's how it all averages out over the next two weeks warmer than normal temperatures winning out <clears throat> excuse me over the next two weeks for especially the upper midwest and the northern plains and that will also allow for those drier than normal conditions to come back. You can see a general lack of moisture the next seven days for the Midwest and the north central part of the country. That spreads east into the week two time frame. And we're right back into really the pattern that we've been in outside of the past seven days with a drier than normal setup occurring from Texas all the way through the Ohio Valley and maybe the northeast part of the country. Taking a look here, I want to make a note as well, because in the extended range, we've continued to see data try to bring back in some moisture for the Midwest. GEFS overnight especially is trying to do that. This was three days ago, the 10 to 15 day time frame for the first five days of October. Here's that same period now. Look how much further west the drier air has come. 
I mean, more into Iowa, more into Wisconsin, and look at how those brown colors have intensified. It's much drier as well. That was the theme throughout the first part of this month and late August uh, with model data trying to bring back rains in the extended range and it just not really happening. I think that if there's going to be rain ahead, it's going to be across parts of the northwestern plains as it was throughout much of the last 45 days. Taking a look at the latest data into October, uh, this bottom right image is your latest outlook for September from the CFS. Continues to trend warmer and warmer across the north central part of the country. Matches with what our October outlook has looked like for quite some time. Don't have any reason to disagree with that type of an idea. And look at the drier trend as well. Same type of thing that happened as we headed into September. Widespread drier than normal conditions, the signal here on the CFS, especially for the eastern Ag Belt and into parts of the Midwest and the lower Mississippi River Valley region. Again, I don't have a big reason to disagree with that signal. It might be a little bit too dry in the Northwest Plains, but the signal in October is certainly milder than normal and drier than normal ahead. Which then leads me to my next point, which is the flash drought indicator. Even with some of the recent rains, still this flash drought signal in parts of the Ohio Valley, uh, especially Illinois, northern Ohio, northern parts of Indiana, those are some of the areas that got skipped out on some of the heavier rains. You combine that with the current soil moisture, you can still see very dry across the northern Ohio Valley, and look at how this changes over the next two weeks. Those dry soils expanding over the next two weeks or so, and you combine the warmer than normal temperatures and the drier than normal temperature or precipitation, excuse me, continuing into October, uh, still concerned about drought expansion in October across the brown area, and I'm concerned that the severe drought conditions continue to expand and develop across parts of Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and Michigan, so something to keep in mind as we head into October. Before we go, just a couple of quick notes on updated winter analogs. We updated our December outlook yesterday and threw it in the Clarity platform. Here's a look at our top analogs right now. Uh, really, 2013, I still think, is one of the best analogs, just looking at the overall oceanic pattern right now. Uh, but some similarities to last year, some similarities to a year like 2017 as well. And blending all these years together, here's what you get for December. I really like how this looks overall. I think December starts out probably uh, with a cooler start to winter, especially across the northern tier of the U.S. Would not be shocked just based off some recent history if the end of December and end of the start of January maybe is the coldest period of the winter if I had to make a very early call. Uh, 2024 kind of had that. 2017 into 18 had that. 13 into 14 had that. There's a lot of recent support. 22 as well uh, had a little bit of that. And so there's definitely support from some of the closer matches with La Nina to have a cold stretch towards the holidays and into the start of the new year. So something to keep in mind there. And you can kind of see that because the cooler air spreads more so into the eastern U.S. into January. And then into February, we get into a very volatile pattern with a cold central part of the country and a warmer east coast. Overall, this matches what we've been discussing for quite some time pretty well as we evolve throughout the winter season. Certainly, this would support uh, plenty of opportunities for winter weather as we go throughout the year. And as a result, we have updated our seasonal snowfall outlook above normal snow potential across the Great Lakes, the upper Midwest. I also think there could be a corridor in the uh, you know lower Ohio Valley, out even through Arkansas and Oklahoma, of above normal snow potential. And probably a higher potential this winter in that same region for ice threats as well. Uh, certainly some of these years had a little bit of the ice risk, and I do think that's something we need to monitor in this region as we go throughout this winter. I am concerned about a little bit of some split flow that could allow for drier conditions to develop across the plains, and then at times being too warm up the east coast to support big snowstorms. I do think that there can be an opportunity if you're in the northeast early on in the winter and towards the new year. Guys, that's all I have for today's forecast. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to reach out. Have a great rest of your day.